guys, what's up? And welcome back to Cooking with Remy. Let's get cooking. So I'm coming at you guys, obviously in the kitchen, for a new episode. If you can't tell, I'm wearing a really beautiful shade of green. I might even call it Whole Foods Green because today's episode, believe it or not, is sponsored by Whole Foods. Yay! If you guys watch my vlogs, especially when I lived in downtown, you guys know that I would walk to Whole Foods every single day because in downtown, there were very few grocery store options. It was also right when I started my health journey. I loved just walking around the aisles. It was my favorite thing to do. It was like a fun pastime for me. So today, being able to work with Whole Foods on an episode of Cooking with Remy is surreal for me. I don't know about you guys, but cooking during the summertime is my absolute favorite. I love the barbecues, I love dining out fresco, I love the produce, everything is just so delicious and fresh. So today I am teaming up with Whole Foods Market to share with you guys the first ever top five condiment trends of summer 2022. You guys know I'm a saucy girl. I can never get enough sauce. I love drenching everything in sauce. I love getting lost in the sauce. So here's what we're cooking today. As I said, summer is my favorite season for cooking, for eating, for everything. So I thought it'd be really fun to walk you guys through an entire day of recipes today from breakfast to lunch, to dinner, to dessert of delicious summer inspired recipes. First up for breakfast, if you guys watch the vlogs, you know that I have been obsessed with the TikTok viral hash brown avocado toast recipe and I thought it would be so much fun to put our own spin on it. So we're making homemade white cheddar crispy hash browns and then topping it with avocado, super delicious, a fried egg, and then some momofuku chili crunch. If you guys know me, you know that I eat a jar of that pretty much every month because it's so good and it's on this condiment list and it was just blessed from heaven. For me, summer scream sandwiches, I have so many memories of going to the beach with my friends in high school, stopping at a Vietnamese bakery on the way, picking up a banh mi and then eating it on the beach. So today for lunch, I wanted to do a barbecue pork belly banh mi. Pork belly is amazing on its own, but when you add barbecue sauce to it, it takes it to the next level. So we're using the Bachan's original barbecue sauce. And then for dinner, I wanted to do some sort of fish. I've been craving salmon lately, so I love doing mustard glazed salmon. It's incredibly easy and so foolproof. Salmon and mustard flavors go so well together. And today I'm using the Maya and Mike's Hot Honey Special Edition Hot honey Dijon mustard. And then on the side, we're doing crispy baked potato bites and garlic broccolini. It is so good. And then last but not least, summer scream strawberries to me. It's the best time to have strawberries. Absolutely. I'm a strawberry girl. So we're doing little mini individual strawberry shortcakes. So we've got a stacked menu today and let's get cooking. All right, so we're starting with our homemade hash browns, which I will say are a little bit more labor intensive or quite a bit rather than the ones that you just pop into the air fryer, which are delicious, but these are next level and it's worth the work, I promise. So I already started by prepping the two ingredients that I needed to shred. First up, I have three russet potatoes here that I cleaned, peeled, and then shredded. For all shredding purposes, I personally use my little handheld one, which I'll link down below for you guys. I love it. It suctions. It's really easy. There's different little like attachments you can put in for a fine shred, a thicker shred. If you want to do like zoodles and things, it's amazing and I love it, but you can also use a box shredder. You can use a food processor. You can do whatever you'd like, but I finally shredded three potatoes. Little pro tips when it comes to shredding, make sure you shred the potatoes into cold water. It'll help the potatoes stop from oxidizing. Basically when they sit out in the air, it's gonna turn brown and just not as delicious looking. Obviously potatoes are starchy, so we wanna make sure that we rinse as much of that starch off like if we were cooking rice. So what I'll do is I'll shred the potatoes and then I'll put them into a large bowl and fill the bowl with water and kind of run my fingers through it to kind of loosen up that starch. Then if you have a fine mesh strainer, you can put them into that and rinse them again. Or if you don't, you can just put them into another bowl and then rinse them out again again until the water runs nice and clear. The biggest thing that we wanna worry about when we're making these hash browns is we wanna get these potatoes as dry as we possibly can. That's gonna allow them to get really nice and crispy. And then also if you're frying them and there's water in there, that's dangerous, so be very careful, please. So I get them really, really dry by squeezing out all the excess water on a cheesecloth. You can use paper towels if you don't have that, but the cheesecloth is just like a little step higher and a little bit easier. So I'll wring out as much water as I possibly can and then let them sit for like 10 minutes or so just to kind of dry. Then for the cheeses, I'm using white cheddar because is one of my personal favorites, but you can use pepper jack. If you want a little bit more of a kick, you can use regular cheddar, whatever floats your boat. You can also use pre-shredded cheese if you like, but I like to shred mine myself because I feel like you get more of like a cheese pull with it and it's got less preservatives and it's just a little bit better, but do whatever you like, whatever's easiest for you. I've also found that freezing the cheese for like 15 minutes or so before you shred it makes it a lot easier and you get better strings than when you do it when it's just refrigerated. All right, now to assemble, we're gonna put our potatoes into the bowl and then we're gonna add in one cup of cheese. You can add in more if you'd like or less if you'd like. I like to pack mine full so we get lots of cheese though. Perfect, one cup of cheese. All right, I put on some gloves because I'm gonna get my hands mixing in here. We're gonna crack in two eggs. 
room temperature is best for this. One, this one's a blue egg, how cute is that? Egg number two, see it's just so much more orange, right? The Flavier. I have two cloves of minced garlic and then two teaspoons of chopped rosemary from the garden. Sprinkle that in. And then for seasonings, I have salt, pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder, my faves. And then we're just gonna get in there, pop the yolks, and get everything nice and mixed together. We're also sprinkling in flour to bind everything together. Now that the potato mixture is ready and the oil is on the stove going, I'm gonna take a half cup and scoop up a nice heaping half cup amount. I'm personally gonna be pan frying mine today, but you also have the option to air fry these if you'd like to. After I form my patties, I put them in the fridge for about 30 minutes to an hour to set up a little bit. So I put them into the air fryer at 370 degrees and I cooked them for 15 minutes and then flipped them over and did another five to six minutes until they were perfectly crispy. Potatoes are easy, they're pretty foolproof. As long as they're cooked and crispy, you're good. Right before we add them in, I'm gonna drop the heat just a smidge, slide her in. After four minutes, when you can see the edges are getting nice and golden brown, I'm gonna flip the hash browns over and cook for another four to five minutes. All right guys, we just assembled the hash brown avocado toast. I topped each hash brown with a half of a small avocado, or you can do maybe like a quarter of a larger one, and then topped it with a fried egg. And then for the finishing touches, we're gonna do some flaky salt and our Momofuku chili crunch, which truly takes this to the next level. Also guys, these are the ones that we put into the air fryer. They are really delicious, a really nice way to make them a little bit healthier if you're choosing so, but if you feel like it, frying is also a wonderful way to go. So one of the top five condiment trends for Whole Foods this summer is hot chili summer, which if you guys know me, I love adding a little kick to all my food. So if you're like me and you love a little spice or a lot of spice, there are so many options at Whole Foods to amp up all your meals this season. They have everything from like sauces to oils to paste to honey. You guys know I love my hot honey and I especially love my Momofuku chili crunch. No joke, please look. I already have two more. This one's half gone on deck. I actually was buying them from the Momofuku website, which David Chang, if you're watching this, I am obsessed with you and I love you so much and thank you for everything you've done for Korean cuisine. But anyways, you can also buy it at Whole Foods, which I actually had no idea about. But you guys, when I tell you this is the best chili oil crunch that I've ever tried in my life, I mean it. It's so good. It's like sweet, it's salty, it's spicy, it's all the things. And it makes the best topping for pretty much anything, even ice cream. I like to just add a little bit right on top. It looks so good. Finally, it is time to eat. I am so excited. Let's do a taste test. All right, we got to pop the yolk. Oh, ho, ho, ho. get all that delicious jamminess everywhere. It is messy. One, two, three. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, it's perfect. Oh my God, it's so good. The rosemary and the hash brown just adds so much depth of flavor. The egg is perfect, the avocado adds creaminess, and then the spiciness from the chili crunch. So good. Breakfast is done, let's move on to lunch. Moving on to lunch, we're gonna be making the barbecue pork belly banh mi. I have here in front of me a pound of pork belly. It looks so delicious. In Korean cuisine, pork belly is like one of my favorite things to grill for Korean barbecue. So I have mine on some aluminum foil because I'm gonna do mine in the air fryer. I like the crispy exterior that I get from that, but if you don't have that, you can just do the oven. And I'm gonna start by taking a fork and I'm gonna fork all the skin. This is gonna tenderize the meat and then also just help with crisping everything up. Now I'm gonna sprinkle the top with salt and then I'm gonna massage the salt in all over the pork. Since we're cooking this in the air fryer and the basket's a little small, I'm just gonna chop it in half here. we will put them side by side and then I'm gonna fold up all my foil to almost make like a little dish for it to sit in. There we go. And then also this will be great because it can hold all the barbecue sauce that we're gonna put on it. So another one of the top five condiment trends for summer is barbecue goes global. I will say, when I think of barbecue, I feel like I always think of the quintessential American barbecue, which is one of my favorite parts of summer. But not only is barbecue in America, obviously, it is everywhere. I mean, for me personally, I'm Korean, as you guys know, and I love Korean barbecue. I love all the marinated meats. I love all the Asian flavors. And this right here is another great way to incorporate Asian barbecue flavors into your meal. So this is the Bachan's original Japanese barbecue sauce. I, no joke though, already had this in my pantry. This right here is the gluten-free version. I was walking around Whole Foods and I saw this at the butcher counter and I picked it up and I've been meaning to try it. So now I have both, which I'm very excited about. So if you're gluten-free, there's an option for you, but we have the original today. This one almost tastes like a teriyaki. Like it's got like a sweet taste to it, which I really, really like. And it's more of a watery consistency than like a thick barbecue sauce, which I also very much like. I'm just gonna pour this onto my meat and you can use this as not only a sauce, you can use it as a marinade. I love the consistency of this. It would go great on any sort of like rice bowl you're making. And I like that the sauce pools up underneath because it's gonna caramelize when we're cooking the pork. Get a nice amount on there. It smells so good. Now I'm gonna go in with a brush to make sure that all of it is nice and coated. And because the sauce has so much flavor, 
flavor. I'm actually not gonna season it anymore. You can of course add seasonings if you'd like, but I'm just gonna let the sauce do the talking. And I'm gonna lower this so very gently into my air fryer basket and I'm gonna cook this at 400 degrees. Oh, it looks so good. And then we'll come back. Oh my God, it already smells so good. While the pork belly's in the air fryer, I'm gonna get started on a like saucy glaze kind of thing because as I said, I love sauces. I need sauces with literally everything. So in here we have a quarter cup of the barbecue sauce that we just used on the pork. And then to that, I'm gonna add a tablespoon of brown sugar to add some more sweetness to that. A quarter cup of water three cloves of minced garlic. And if you want to make it a little spicy, I have a tablespoon here of the chili crunch. But if you don't like spicy, you can totally omit this. And then just whisk this all together and we're gonna pour it into a saucepan. Once I put it into the saucepan, I'm gonna put this over high heat on the stove till it comes to a boil and then lower it to a simmer. So basically like low heat until it forms a nice thick glaze. The pork belly is out of the air fryer. I let it rest for about 15 minutes. This was the other piece, but uh, we've been taking little Scooby snacks is what my dad likes to call them from this already. So it's already depleted. It's that delicious, you guys. It's so easy. So I'm just chopping them up into thin pieces. But if you want to serve this like as a full entree, you could just serve like a hunk of it if you like. But since we're putting it on a sandwich, I'm chopping it into nice little thin pieces. So how I cooked this was I put it in the air fryer at 400 degrees for 10 minutes and then flipped it over and cooked it for another 10 minutes. And it has the most delicious caramelized exterior and it tastes so good, you guys. It's still so juicy, but perfectly cooked. Ah, it's so good. All right, time to assemble our banh mi. So I'm just using a regular baguette that I got from Whole Foods, which Cal is very upset that he doesn't get to eat this plain, but that's okay because it's gonna be even better. So I'm gonna start by taking Japanese mayo and putting it on either side and then spread that around on the bread. I toasted this at 350 degrees in the oven for about eight to 10 minutes until it's nice and crispy. Then we're gonna go in with our pork belly. We're gonna layer on our slices, adding tons of meat. So it's great, you can make this for sandwiches, you can put it on ramen, you can eat it on its own. We actually have a recipe on the Cooking with Remy website that is a kimchi panini with mozzarella and kimchi and pork belly and it is delicious and does not get enough credit. So I highly recommend checking that out as well. All right, once the pork is nice and laid out, I'm gonna spoon on some of our delicious glaze that we made. It's just gonna add more of that delicious Japanese barbecue flavor. That looks bomb. Then for toppings, you can do whatever you like. I just have a bunch of traditional banh mi toppings here. First First off, I made these pickled carrots and daikon radish. They add such a nice kind of tangy bite to the sandwich and I love to load mine up with this. These also go great in spring rolls. I'm gonna add some cucumbers for freshness. I love the bite that raw onions add. This is raw sweet onion, so it still has a little bit of sweetness to it without being too raw tasting. I love adding sliced jalapenos. This is something that's newer to me because I was always scared of them, but I love the heat that it adds and it goes so well with the coolness of the mayo. And then last but not least, you guys know a little bit of cilantro right on top and we have a delicious pork belly barbecue banh mi. The crowd goes wild, wow! All right, time for the taste test. Cal already took a bite out of this one. What did you think, Cal? Really good. Really good. Okay, here Delicious. we go. Delicious. I'm gonna be honest, as I put the cilantro on the sandwich, I gagged, so I won't be eating the cilantro part, but I tried and that's all that matters. Oh my God. Wow. Mm. Whenever I crave a banh mi, which is all the time, I get it sent to my house and it's so expensive with delivery fees. And this is so much better. No offense to the place at my house. I got cilantro. Let's move on to dinner. Okay, lunch was so delicious. I cannot get over how good and easy that was. Now moving on to dinner, we're gonna begin with our crispy baked potato bites, which if you like a loaded baked potato like myself, and these are right up your alley. We already started by parboiling our little potatoes. You can use fingerling, you can use baby. We're using baby Dutch potatoes today. As you can see, they're steaming and my fingers are burning. So parboiling means basically we kind of like half boiled them before we're gonna cook them again. Potatoes notoriously take a long, long, long time to cook. By doing this, we don't have to bake in the oven for nearly as long and it cuts our time in like half. What I did to do that is I filled up this pot with some water, brought it to a boil, added in salt till it tasted like ocean water, dropped my potatoes in. These are bigger than your normal baby potatoes. So I boiled these for 15 minutes until they're fork tender. Woo! But if they're smaller, I do like 10 minutes or so, just until you can stick a fork in it and it just goes in really nice and easily, but without crumbling apart. So our potatoes are ready and now we can move on to the next step. I've got a cookie sheet here that I've lined with aluminum foil. I'm gonna dump my potatoes out. Woo, hot. Gonna put them all together and then we're gonna coat these in olive oil, just enough so that 
each one can be nicely coated. I'd say about a quarter cup or so. With clean hands, I'm gonna toss them all around. They are really hot, so put on gloves if you need. I've pretty much burnt all my fingers at this point that I'm good. But make sure each one is nice and glossy and coated in oil. I'm gonna use this glass jar, but you can use a mug, a plate, whatever. We are going to use this to flatten out our potatoes and create really delicious, nice ridges in them that are gonna crisp up in the oven when we bake them. So we're gonna press down till they're nice and flat. You don't want them too flat to the point where they break apart. You want them to be whole still, but this is perfect, just like that. Also, we're parboiling them so that we're able to do this because you could not normally do this with a raw potato. Oh, hoo -hoo, yummy, they look perfect, yay. Now I'm gonna top each one with just a little bit more olive oil, just a light drizzle. Just the slightest little bit. Make sure to salt your potatoes. Potatoes and salt go together like Momo and Daisy. Now, you can of course air fry these, but I'm gonna stick them in the oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20 minutes until they get nice and crispy on the edges and they should still be nice and soft on the inside. While the potatoes are in the oven, we are now gonna work on our salmon. I love doing mustard and salmon together. If you guys haven't tried it, please try this out and I already know you're gonna love it. So for the base of the sauce, we're using the Maya Hot Honey Dijon Mustard. It's with Mike's Hot Honey, which Honestly, it's just a match made in heaven. I love any mustard, and especially if it's a hot honey Dijon, I am so stoked for it. So this is the base of the sauce. We're gonna add in a third cup of that hot honey Dijon. Honestly, this would be fire with some chicken nuggies as well. And to help caramelize the salmon even more and add more sweetness, I'm actually gonna do three tablespoons of more hot honey. This is a mild hot honey. You can add hot, hot honey if you'd like, or regular honey, but I just love the sweetness that it mixes with the salmon. Ooh, I like pouring it in too, it's fun. Then we're gonna add in two cloves of minced garlic garlic. Another great pairing with salmon is fresh dill. So we're adding in some fresh chopped dill, some fresh chives as well. And then lastly, some salt and pepper. And this is gonna be a thicker kind of glaze for the salmon. We're gonna brush it on top. So you want it to be nice and thick and just whisk it all together. Oh, it smells so good. And we're ready to go. This is for my hand mixer. <laughs> Adapt and overcome. So we've got our beautiful salmon filet here. Look how good this looks. And I'm gonna chop it up into little filets. So the last of the top five condiment trends that I'll be talking about is ketchup and mustard mastered, which obviously when we think of summer, we think of barbecues, we think of hamburgers, and I always think of just ketchup and mustard, like the plain ketchup and mustard. But it's so exciting to see, even just like from today, how all of them are just elevated at a new level now. Like for instance, obviously this hot honey Dijon with hot honey inside of it, or there's like curry ketchup. There's just so many new flavors and things to try that just take all of your summer grilling and cooking to the next level. All right, our salmon flays are cut, and when I tell you guys I did a beautiful job, I'm gonna unveil them. Ready? Three, two, one. Oh. <laughs> Three, two, one. Oh, they look so good. And I made sure to get them extra nice and dry again because we want them to get crispy just like the pork belly, but also we want that sauce that we just made to adhere and we need a nice dry surface for that. They look beautiful. And now I'm gonna transfer them to some aluminum foil. Now I'm gonna spoon on our delicious mixture right to the tops of the salmon. Don't worry if we have some overspill. It'll coat the sides and get nice and crispy and caramelized. And then just rub it in. You can use a brush if you want, but I found the spoon works just as well. Once these are fully coated, I'm gonna pop them into an air fryer at 370 degrees. I have found that the air fryer makes foolproof salmon every time. It's crispy, it's delicious. I like mine medium rare. So I'm gonna cook it for about eight to 10 minutes or so and it'll be done, but you can always pop it in the oven. Cook it all the way through if you like it more well done, whatever floats your boat. All right guys, our potatoes are done. They look so crispy. Let's do a little crisp test. Ooh, that crispiness. It looks so bomb. So I put them in the oven for 25 minutes at 425 degrees, then switched to the broiler, broiled them for three minutes, took them out, added on some more of that white cheddar from earlier, but you can add whatever cheese you'd like, but obviously a loaded baked potato needs cheese. Put it back in the broiler for three minutes to crisp up that cheese to create a nice crusty shell. And now we can finish chopping. First up, every baked potato needs sour cream, so we're gonna do a little mini dollop on each. Basically, each one of these little potato bites are going to be a baked potato within themselves. We're also gonna add some bacon bits. I pre-cooked this bacon, got it really extra crispy, and then just chopped it up into tiny little bite-sized pieces. And last but not least, some fresh chives for color and just a little flavor. Here is our dinner all laid out. We have the mustard glazed salmon, crispy potato bites, and we have the garlic broccolini. So how we made the broccolini was I added about an inch of water to my pot and then threw in the steamer basket. Once the water came to a 
boil, I put the broccolini into the basket and I let it cook for about three minutes or so until they became a really nice vibrant green color. After that, I pulled it out and I dried off the pan. I added in a couple tablespoons of olive oil and then three cloves of garlic to that and I stirred it around till it got nice and fragrant and the garlic started to crisp up. After that, I put the broccolini back in and mixed it around with the olive oil and the garlic and let it cook for another couple minutes or so. I like my broccolini to be nice and crunchy but still have this really pretty green color. Once it was done, I sprinkled it with some red pepper flakes and some flaky sea salt and is the perfect side dish to any meal. Gotta squeeze our lemon juice. The salmon is like so buttery and flaky. Get all that nice sauce on there. Mmm. Oh my God, it's perfectly cooked. If you like mustard, this is the perfect salmon. You can eat it on its own. You can have it with sides. You can put it in a salad, put it on rice. It's so juicy and delicious. I'm getting emotional. Okay, potato time. Oh my God. Last but not least, broccolini, of course. Oh my God, the garlic flavor is amazing. I love when there's still like a nice crunch to it. All right, I had my veggies. Let's move on to dessert. For dessert, as I said, we're making a strawberry shortcake. So we're gonna start by making the strawberry saucy situation. You guys know, I love the sauce. So in a saucepan, I'm gonna add in my strawberries. I cut up a cup and a half of strawberries. To this, we're gonna add in a quarter cup of water, half the juice of a lemon. And then I'm gonna add an eighth cup of sweetener. You can use regular sugar. I am using monk fruit, but whatever floats your boat. And then we're gonna stir this and add this to the stove and then turn the stove to medium heat. Let it come to a boil and then reduce to a simmer until our strawberry sauce comes together. Finally, to assemble our little mini strawberry shortcakes, I've already baked off just a can of pre-made biscuit dough. You can make your own biscuits if you'd like, but this is just a little bit simpler and easier. And I got the flaky one so that I could split them in half. I'm gonna put the bottom half into my bowl. Then we're gonna add a scoop of vanilla ice cream. I'm using vanilla bean almond milk ice cream, which sounds delicious. I might even add two scoops to be honest. Ooh, I love the little vanilla bean flex in here too. Now we've got our hot, steamy strawberry sauce. It's luscious and glossy and beautiful. And we're gonna add a couple spoons onto the ice cream. We gotta move quickly though, so it doesn't melt too quickly. Mm hmm We're gonna add the little top of our biscuit, a little bit of whipped cream. I'm using this oat-based whipped cream, which sounds delicious. Oh, ho, ho, that looks good. And last but not least, topping off with some powdered sugar. As someone with a sweet tooth, I cannot wait for this. Mm. Oh my God. It's the perfect summer combination and so easy. All right, guys, that wraps up this episode of Cooking with Remy. This is so good. Be sure to comment down below and let me know which of the condiment trends was your favorite that I covered today. And also click the link in my description box to just learn more about Whole Foods trends. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.